The pull-up is one of the best exercises you can do. It's functional and involves a lot of muscles. To get the most out of it and make your pull-ups perfect, you should take a look on these four points. We are starting right here with the mistakes. When you do pull-ups, you should always aim for a full range of motion. Do not only use the upper or lower part of the movement and go into full extension of your arms at the bottom. A pull-up should also be performed with strength and not with momentum. Avoid any form of kicking and swinging. Of course it's also important to control the movement the whole time. Don't let yourself fall into your joints. The last mistake is to not pull evenly. You should control yourself to pull with both sides equally to avoid imbalances. The next point is the width of your grip. Here you can choose different versions from a wide to a close grip. Avoid a too wide grip because the wider you choose the grip, the more your elbows go to the side. And this is not an optimal position for the shoulders and can lead to injuries. When you choose a narrow grip, your elbows stay close to the body. This is not bad at all, but to target your latissimus optimally, you should choose a grip which allows you to do a mix of extension and adduction. With this arm movement, you will target your lats in an optimal way. A shoulder wide or little more than shoulder wide grip is optimal for that movement. Of course you can also use other grips for your pull ups like the chin grip or a neutral grip. The different grips will work different parts of your arms more or less and also have a little influence on your back. The next point is often neglected but very important. It's about the shoulder blade movement. A pull up isn't just about bending your arms. First of all, you have to pull your shoulder blades down to get the necessary tension in your back. After that, you bend your arms and also try to pull your shoulder blades together. We want to avoid a rounded shoulder because in this way you don't target all the muscles in your back in an optimal way. The rounded shoulder position can also lead to imbalances and injuries in the long term. This leads us to the fine tuning of the movement and here it gets a little bit controversial. There are two different body positions for a pull-up. Some people prefer the straight or also known as the hollow body pull-up and some prefer the arched back pull-up. The straight pull-up has the advantage that you work your core because you tilt your pelvis backwards and with that you engage your abs. The negative thing about this movement is that it can be counterproductive for your back engagement. When you tilt your pelvis and engage your abs, you trigger your anterior muscle chain. But the actual goal of a pull-up is to activate your posterior chain in your upper body. It is possible to do both at the same time, but it's very hard and often leads to a suboptimal movement. Now when you do the arched back pull-up, you just focus on the whole posterior chain because you allow your spine to go in a complete extension instead of opposite movements during the movement. Now some people might say that an arched lumbar spine is not good and unhealthy. But this is only true if you put load on that arched lumbar spine. During the pull-up you have no load on your spine, but you actually relieve the load from it. So this is an active arch position, which is not bad at all. When it comes to the position of your legs, it's possible to cross them or not. If you cross your legs, it will be easier to stabilize the movement. If you do your pull-ups with uncrossed legs, your body has to do more stabilization work, especially in the core. This can be a pro or a con, depending on your goals. But it plays a minor role in terms of back development. If you have some more questions or points to discuss, just let your thoughts go in the comments. Thanks, Alex.